Hey guys, Drew here from Drew's Cues, and today I'd like to talk to you all about lines and spaces. And more specifically, I want to talk to you about an easy way to remember where on the staves all of the notes fall. And I'm gonna come at this at a slightly different angle than some of you might be used to. Let's go! If you've never seen a piece of sheet music before, here is what a piano score looks like. Notice that there are a bunch of lines that go horizontally along the page, in sets of five lines. Each of those sets of lines is called a staff. In piano music, these are most frequently grouped in groups of two staves with a little bit of space between them. They also most frequently have a squiggly S-looking thing on the top one and a hook-like thing on the bottom one. And then there are some numbers and some other symbols that we're going to completely ignore in this video. Those symbols are the key signature, and if you want to know more about that, check out my video on key signatures here. Frequently, when we're learning about where notes fall on a staff, we start by looking at the treble clef, or that squiggly looking one, and then we look at the bass clef, or that hook thing, and then we put them all together. But today, I wanna come at it sort of from the opposite direction. Imagine you and a friend are having a conversation about creating a system to both write and read music. Okay, so we need something graphical that can show notes moving up and down and moving forward in time. Okay, graphical. Well, graphs have lines, so we need a bunch of lines. Let's start with a bunch of horizontal lines. Here, I have 13 lines going across. Now, we need to decide where the notes go. Someone once told me that there's a note called middle C. Let's go ahead and put that right on the middle line. But we also need something to remind us in the future that this note is middle C. How about a kind of brackety thingy that points at that line, like this. Great! Cool, so now each line represents a different note? Well, there are a lot of notes, so we would need a lot of lines, or we would run out pretty quickly. But what if we alternated between lines and spaces, like this? Okay, I like that, that makes sense. But hold on, what if we add a melody to it? It's gonna start getting pretty cluttered and confusing, and some of those higher and lower notes are getting farther and farther away from middle C. What might be an easier number of lines that you could recognize instantly? Let's just say five lines with four spaces. So, how about we take away the top line, and we take away the bottom line, and take away the middle line? That leaves us with two groups of five lines. But that line was our middle C, and you just got rid of it! That doesn't seem wise. I didn't really get rid of it, though. It's still there, and when we need it, we can just add an extra line like this. Great, okay, so this is looking cleaner and simpler. But without that middle line, there's nowhere for our C clef to go. Now what do we do? Let's find two new symbols to help remind us where all of the notes are. We know that the second line on the top staff is a G because it's five notes up from middle C. So, for now, Let's put a G there. And the second line down on the bottom staff is an F, because it's five notes down from the middle C. So, for now, let's put an F there. 
I mean, I guess that works, but that old sea clef looked so fancy and pretty. Can you fancy this up a little bit? Sure, we can do that. How about this? See, the treble clef looks kinda like a G, and it wraps around the G line. Treble comes from the Latin word for triple. The highest part in three-part counterpoint was called the treble part. It's also the highest of the three clefs. And the bass clef kinda looks like an F and wraps around the F line, and the two dots also surround the F line. And bass, of course, comes from the same root as the word bass, and is the lowest voice and the lowest of the three clefs. And voila! We have two staves with five lines each, each with a symbol at the beginning to help us remember where all of the notes are, and with middle C right in between the two of them. And with these grouped together, plus some extra ledger lines on the top and on the bottom, we can get to all of the notes on a piano. Armed with this knowledge, you will never have trouble figuring out what notes are where again. I hope you enjoyed this- WAIT! So, now we know how to read and write the notes up and down, but how do we know how long they are? Or how fast to play them? Ah, that will be a good topic for another time. Check out an upcoming video on rhythms and how we chart how the music moves through time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content and want more of it, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and then ring the bell so that you get notifications and don't miss anything. Was this helpful to you? Is there another way that you use to remember where all of the notes are in the treble clef or in the bass clef? If so, leave a comment below and let me know what's most helpful to you. Maybe I'll pick it up one day and do another video about that. And check out my Facebook page and Instagram, at Drew Wheaton Music, for more updates. See you next time!